those nasty ice dams and winter storms can have a big effect on your house, but also a big effect on your daily life. And someone who's been reporting on the weather every day is meteorologist Jim Cantore hey, from the Weather Channel. Good to see you again. Thanks for coming down to Atlanta in yeah, the Weather pleasure. Channel studios, buddy. It is nice to be on your home turf. Although, you spent a lot of time up north with us just uh, last year. Uh, it was incredible. What a winter, 110 inches of snow. As a matter of fact, it took until July to melt all that snow. So even that's just crazy, right? It was crazy. It was a record, right? It was an all-time record yeah, 110 snowfall? inches. All-time record for, for the city of Boston. That is crazy. Yeah. And it came down quick, and it came down in a short period of time. Yeah, really, in 30 days, you you got about 90 inches of snow. So mm -hmm. that's just an incredible. And we know the stress that it put on the homeowners up right. there, the stress on the roofs. Yep. I mean, it was a lot of stress. And so are we breaking weather records all across the country in all different seasons? Yeah, we're getting more extremes. Take the man-made equation out of it, yep. okay? If you just look at what's happening short-term uh, across the globe, we are seeing more extremes. Right. We know that the earth is warmed. The earth warming can hold more water. More water means more, more intense rainstorms coming down. Um, so weather extremes, especially in the United States, have gotten worse, uh, certainly in our time, in recent times. So this is a trend, no yeah. question about it, you're Absolutely. saying. Absolutely. So if we have trends, whether they're short-term or long-term, and we're in the middle of them, what does that mean for homeowners? I mean, how does that change how they think about their daily well, life? Well, you know, one of the things that, that stands out to me is, is, is the warmth. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen the Northwest incredibly warm last summer. Uh, the Northeast, you know, can get warm as well for extended periods of time. So where I grew up in Vermont, we didn't have an air conditioner. No, house. you kidding never, me? Right? Deal with this. You know, put the fan in front of you all night, my dad would say. Now, you know what, with, with the heat, building and coming a little bit farther north for longer stretches of extremes, it's probably a good idea to think about air conditioning. You know, and, and the reverse uh, is true too, because down here, I see you guys build differently than us. I mean, we've seen you guys build with exposed pipes because you've never expected to get a freeze, and now that's happening. Yeah, even into Florida, uh, and even into Southern California and Arizona, big cold coming much, much farther south with mm -hmm. an amplified jet stream, right? right? That brings the extremes in both directions. I've got to go back to the snow because we're still traumatized up in Boston from the amount of it. Um, 110 inches is a lot of snow. Not all snow is created equal. I'm thinking about shoveling it. I'm thinking about the weight on roofs. Talk to me. This I stuff actually way. think you guys really lucked out because this was a very light snow. Right. Um, and the light snow, a cubic foot, is about seven pounds. Mm -hmm. A wet snow, which you typically get in Boston in the eastern New England, is about 20 pounds a wow. cubic foot. So that, but, but still, when you get 110 inches, yeah. that's a lot of snow. That's many cubic feet piled up on top of each other. So that's why you constantly heard from the mayor and the governor, hey, get this snow off your roof, get this snow off your roof. Yeah. It's also melting underneath. There is heat from the house escaping. And so now you've got snow and ice right. on your roof as well. Okay, so we got to be thinking about getting it off the roofs, think about building code. And I've yeah, got and be it. careful when you're taking it off there because it's not only going to bring the snow down, but maybe some ice chunks on top of you. Try and get it away from the house because eventually all that stuff smelts and it goes right into the, into the basement. I leave all that heavy duty to my little kids and my wife. <laughs> they do that work. <laughs> You're out here being a star. That's good. I understand. <laughs> I've got to add uh, carbon monoxide poisoning because that's always a concern during the winter when the snow piles up. If you look at downtown Boston, especially the north end that was built for horse and buggy way right back when, you know, you've got cars literally on top of each other. So it was car, heavy snow. I mean, literally imprinting themselves into the snow. Right. That's how tight. So you go in there, you start your car, you're waiting for it to warm up. Guess where the carbon monoxide is going? Mm, right back back in the into car. the car. So keep the tailpipes clear, and the same Huge. holds true for boilers and furnaces. Keep those exhaust pipes clear as well. All right, well, good information, Jim. Thank you. Thank and you uh, I'd like to say we want to see you in Boston again, but maybe with your golf clubs. Or skis.